ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون اما بعد فان خير الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدع وكل بدعه ضلاله قال الله تعالى في كتابه الكريم ومن احسن قولا ممن دعا الى الله وعمل صالحا وقال انني من المسلمين My dear respected brothers and sisters we start with the beautiful ayah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the merits of calling people inviting people to Allah Woman ahsanu qawlan who is there whose words are better than someone who calls others who invites others to Allah and then does good is not just speaking but he actions it and he does good and he says innani min almuslimin truly i am truly one of those who submit to Allah i am a muslim and i invite you to be a muslim as well today's khutbah is not about the obligation of doing da'wah that is established in the quran and the sunnah we all have an obligation kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat lin nas allah said you are the best amongst all the nations who have ever been brought forward to the people why allah explains it in the reminder of this ayah because you do amr al bima'ruf wa nahi 'anil munkar and because you believe in allah the obligation of inviting others to allah that is established today we want to talk about how to do it effectively the obligation is clear the merits are immense we know that allah uh, the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said to ali if someone accepts islam because you've been calling him that's better than everything he compared it to the best of camels at that time it's better than all dunya the merits are there but how to do it effectively that's what we want to establish today and it comes in a series a series of khutbas that i'm trying to deliver where we analyze certain stories from the seera of the best person ever walked on this earth muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam we try to extract some of the gems from some of the stories we find in the seerah of an-nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam and in that series we have already talked about looking after the refugees and the homeless people and how there was a homeless shelter and the refugee camp literally in the masjid of an-nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam in medina we talked already about how to engage the youth youth engagement how important that is today i want to share with you a story about da'wah and we start at the beginning it is the story of sunama ibn usal who was a tribe's leader almost a king of the bani hanifa who controlled central arabia at the time of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam yamama this story by the way you can find in sahih al bukhari the asl and then obviously you can find more details in almost every book of seerah 
Sumama was one of those kings that controlled a large area in Central Arabia. And after the treaty of Al-Hudaybiyah, when there was some relative peace, the Prophet ﷺ started to send letters to the kings, the kings of the world at that time. A letter to the king of Persia, a letter to the king of Rome. And Thumama, not being a king, but controlling a large area, he also received one of those letters. However, when he received the letter of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he ripped it apart and he killed the courier. That was an act of war. Right there. You cannot kill a courier who brings to you a letter of peace. He killed him. He was so frustrated, so angered. How dare you sending me a letter like this? That he killed the letter, it killed the courier. And that was war. At that point, that meant war between the Bani Hanifa and the Muslims. That was an act of war now. So Mama decided, I want to do Umrah. But he knows I have to pass by the region of Medina where the Muslims are. So he needed to keep it a secret. But as they were approaching that region, a small army squad from amongst the Muslims who were on the way back from another campaign, they saw them. They asked him, who are you? They didn't say anything because they know if they say something, that is it. They didn't say anything. So the Muslims took them as prisoners. You don't want to identify yourself. It's a hostile time. They brought him back to al Medina. And Sumama, this leader, this king, was now tied to a pillar inside the masjid of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. By the way, this is one of the evidences that if there is a need, that you can bring non-Muslims inside the masjid. Let them see what's happening inside the masjid because there are misconceptions. There are many of our neighbors, they think what we do in here is tantamount to terrorism. Bring them in. Let them hear what we do. Let them see. That's exactly what the Muslims did. They tied him to a pillar inside the masjid. And when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came, he recognized him. Never have seen him, but he knows this tall stature of a man. How he carries him, this is Sumama. And he said to the Muslims, do you know who you got there? This is the leader of the Bani Hanifa. He is a king. I sent him a letter. Yet, he said to the Muslims to treat him like a VIP prisoner. To only give him from the milk of the camel of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. A person with this status, although a non-Muslim and an act of war, you treat him like a VIP prisoner. He didn't say anything. Next day, he comes to him and he asks him, Thumama, what do you have to say for yourself? You know what you did with my courier. You know what you did. What do you have? Do you have any excuse? What do you have to say for yourself? Now listen to what Sumama said. He said, Endi khair ya Muhammad. I have only good, O oh Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He goes on and he says, In taqtulani taqtul za dam. If you kill me, you kill someone whose dam, whose blood is expensive. You must know. But if you show gra- if you show leniency and kindness, you certainly show kindness and leniency to someone who knows how to be grateful. Words well chosen. He goes on. وَإِن كُنْتَ تُرِيدُ الْمَالَ فَسَلْ تُعْتِ مِنْهُ مَا If you want wealth, if you want money, just ask, and I'll give you whatever you want. And the Prophet ﷺ didn't respond. He just let it be at that. Next day, same question. And the Prophet ﷺ gets the same answer. And Sumama is in the masjid. He sees how the Muslims are coming into the masjid. He sees the brotherhood. He sees how the sufuf are straight. 
He sees how the Sahaba pray heel to heel and shoulder to shoulder as one unit. The same people who some months ago were enemies in Medina. The tribes that used to kill each other. Ansari, Muhajir, different tribes, different people, different skin colors, rich, poor. Everyone comes to the masjid, makes one saf. And acts to one call, Allahu Akbar, in one unit. Umama witnesses everything. He sees what the Prophet ﷺ shares with the Sahaba, radiallahu anhum. Third day, the same question. I want you to see how much actually the Prophet ﷺ was here talking and how much was only let to be observed. The actions, small words. Same question, he gets the same answer. And after that, subhanallah al-azim, he says to the sahaba after some days, let him go. Let him go. That very person who killed the courier of the Muslims some weeks ago, that very person who didn't give satisfactory answers, let him go. And the sahaba said, we hear and we obey. You don't need to understand why something is said in the sunnah of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If it is established in the Quran, if it is established from the sunnah of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you have one job. And one job only. I hear and I obey. I don't even want to know. It's good if I know, but if I don't know, why is this sunnah? Why is this ruling? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. As long as it is sahih, we, we do it. And the sahaba let him go. So Mama goes into an orchard behind the masjid of a Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In some riwayats, it said he takes a shower. And he comes back to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the first words that he now says as a free man, not as a prisoner anymore. The first words are, La ilaha illallah. Muhammadur Rasulullah. As a free man, he didn't want anyone to doubt that he said it under pressure. He didn't want anyone to doubt that he only said this because he wants to accept Islam. Because he saw the beauty of what is happening inside the masjid of an Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And listen to what he then says. After taking the shahada, Ya Muhammad, he says, Wallahi ma kana ala al-ardi wajhun abghadu ilayya min wajhik faqad asbaha wajhuk ahabbu al-wujuhi ilayya. There was no one, no face on the face of this earth that was more, that made me more frustrated, that I hated more than your face. But now, your face, O oh Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa is the most beloved face to me. And he goes on and he says, مَا كَانَ مِن دِينٍ أَبْغَضُ إِلَيَّ مِن دِينِكْ فَأَصْبَحَ دِينُكْ أَحَبُّ الدِّينِ إِلَيَّ There was no religion, no way of life that I hated more than your religion. But now, Al-Islam, your deen, has become the most beloved deen, religion to me. And he goes on and he concludes, Wallahi ma kana min baldin, min baladin, abogadu ilayya min baldik, o baladik, fa asbah baladuk ahabbul biladi. There was no place, no country, no city that I hated more than your city. As for now, your city, your place, Al Medina has become the most beloved place to me. This is when Iman, Iman enters your heart. This is when you see the beauty of Al-Islam. And what I want you to realize here is the importance of acting upon the religion. Not just talking. Dawah, effective dawah, is not just talking. We need the talks. We need the debates. But what we need more than anything is just to act. Just acting. Just stay halal. Stay away from the haram. Do what Allah says. Follow the sunnah of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wallahi, if we all 
would be the trustworthy Muslims, the punctual Muslims, the hardworking Muslims. If we would be that nation, you would see how people would accept Islam in scores. Why? Because the next time they see on TV something, they would say that is not Islam. I know Muhammad, my classmate. I know Fatima. I know Ahmed. He's not like that. She's not like that. He's the most hardworking person I know. The most trustworthy person I know. Just by doing. This is what happened here. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from all of us. May Allah help us to be du'at. Those who call to Al-Islam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us those who love the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and act upon the, Rasul, uh, the sunnah of Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم بارك الله لنا ولكم في القرآن العظيم ونفعنا وإياكم بالآيات والذكر الحكيم قول قول هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على النبي المصطفى وعلى آله وعصابه أجمعين وبعد قال الله تعالى في كتابه الكريم أدعوا إلى سبيل ربك بالحكمة والموعدة الحسنة وجادلهم بالتي هي أحسن إن ربك هو أعلم بمن ضل عن سبيله وهو أعلم بالمهتدين. Invite, invite all to the way of your Rabb with wisdom, with wisdom and kind advice, kind words, and only debate, and only debate with them in the best of manners. Allah subhanahu wa taala said. Surely your Lord alone knows best who has strayed from his way and who is rightly guided. My dear brothers and sisters, from the story of Uthal, we learn that after he accepted Islam and he said what he said, he wanted to go and perform Umrah because he was on the way to do Umrah of Al Jahiliyyah. Now he wants to do Umrah from, from Islam. And the Prophet ﷺ allowed him. Although the Muslims weren't allowed to do Umrah, the Quraysh didn't know about Usal and how he accepted Islam. And so when he came to Mecca and performed Umrah, he was the very first Muslim in history to have performed Umrah. The very first Muslim in history. Even, the, even before the Prophet ﷺ. And so the Quraysh realized who this is. And they realized that he accepted Islam. And some of them wanted to go and kill him. Whilst the other said, stop, you can't do that. He's still the leader of Central Arabia. If you kill him, we are done. There are no caravans reaching us. But the damage was done. And Osar said to them, I will not send you anything coming my way. I will boycott you. For those who ask whether the boycott is from the Sunnah. If it's done properly, led by an Islamic government or an Islamic leader, then boycott is from the Sunnah. He said, I will not send you anything except when the Prophet allows me. That's when I will leave. That's when I will let my caravan come to you again. I will withhold everything. And so it was. My dear brothers and sisters, what we learn from stories like these, and I just had to summarize this story because I know the time is very short, is that we are massively on the delivering when it comes to inviting other people to Islam. And I'm not talking about everyone now having to go to the high street and call to Islam. We got some there. Leave it to them, mashallah. They know what they do. May Allah reward them. But what I'm really talking about is just practicing just practicing the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And you would see wonders happening. Imagine 1.2 million Muslims 
in London, just London, just sticking to Al-Halal and staying as well, as much as we can, staying away from Al-Haram. I know we are not perfect. I know we can't be like the Sahaba radiallahu anhum. But we try to be similar, emulate as much as we can. Imagine what would happen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. I'll leave you with one thought. All this Islamophobia that is out there, all this Islam and the hate that we sometimes experience, brothers and sisters, I personally condemn it. Obviously, this is not what we want, and obviously we need to fight it, but rather than shouting every day and teaching our children Islamophobia, 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 rather let's have some izzah and let's analyze why is that hate out there? Why do our neighbors not understand us? Why do they show this hate? It is because they don't know who we are. That's why. Usal didn't know who the Muslims were, but when he saw the Muslims acting the way they did, he accepted Islam without anyone calling him officially to Islam. If our neighbors would know who we are, if they would know what our values are, if they would know what the Quran is, if they would just know, wonders would happen. Believe me, because we, we are adhering to a deen that is as rational as it can get, as logical as it can get. The values are the most humane values that we can have. And the halal is clear, and the haram is clear. We just need to practice it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from all of us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us tawfiq. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us with upright, honest, truthful da'wah for ourselves first and our families and our children and our neighbors and our co-workers and our classmates. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those role models of the society, those who embody the values of the Quran and the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa aksiru min as-salati wa salami ala Muhammadin صلى الله عليه وسلم فإن من صلى على نبيه مرة واحدة صلى الله عليه بها عشرة اللهم صل وسلم على عبدك ورسولك محمد اللهم رزقنا محبته وإتباءه ظاهرا وباطنا اللهم توفنا على ملته اللهم احشرنا في ذمرته اللهم اسقنا من حوده اللهم ادخلنا في شفاعته اللهم اجمعنا به في جنات النعيم مع الذين أنعمت عليهم من النبيين والصديقين والشهداء والصالحين اللهم ارض عن خلفائه الراشدين أبي بكر وعمر وأثمان وعلي أفضل أتباع المرسلين اللهم ارض عن اللهم ارض عن الصحابة أجمعين وعن التابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين اللهم ارض عنا ما هم بمنك وكرمك يا رب العالمين اللهم اصلح ولا تمر المسلمين اللهم ولي علينا خيارنا ولا تولي علينا شرارنا اللهم انصر إخواننا وأخواتنا المستضعفين في كل مكان اللهم انصر إخواننا وأخواتنا المستضعفين في فلسطين اللهم انصر إخواننا وأخواتنا المستضعفين في غزة يا رب العالمين اللهم فرج عن علمائنا والمظلومين في السجون اللهم فرج عنهم يا رب العالمين ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكونن من الخاسرين إباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله العظيم الجليل أذكركم واشكروه على يميه يزدكم ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون وأقيموا الصلاة